Uh, well, we are seven years old. We started kind of this Kobe Beam for FM revolution in the United States. We work with the most of the top owners in this area, U.S. G Government Services Administration, FAA, VA, Department of Affairs, and um, actually over the past couple of years spread it around the world. We work now with Singapore Ministry of Health, Australian Department of Defense, NTT in Japan, etc. So this is my uh, actually second time on the east part of the Canada. I was in the previous Montreal, CanBIM. Um, sharing the experience, hoping that, hoping that uh, Canada is ready for the introduction, introduction of Kobe and Beam for FM, which I will explain how it works. Um, first, we obviously, when we uh, start talking about Beam for FM, we all understand there is no such a thing as Beam for FM. It's about particular use case. So, as you develop the model, you already need to know what this model is being developed for, because there is no, you know, abstract thing. So, each, each owner that we work with had this some uh, some some custom vision of what they will do this BIM for FM for, right? So that's where you start. And that's why we actually developed a lot of BIM guides for most of the clients that we work with. I'm involved with Veterans Affairs BIM Guide 2.0. We did the Google guidelines, and actually we developed the BIM guidelines for Alberta infrastructure before they lost their main BIM guide. Um, how we envisioned in the original is that there is a wonderful world of beam authoring applications. There is the very solid world of CMMS and CAFA maps and everything else, but there was not, nothing in between. So uh, a lot of owners are saying, I want BIM, and then what the architects and contractors do, they squeeze all of this information into these poor models that are not designed to be data management applications. So we said, well, let's develop an application that will be this wonderful database that will be flexible, scalable, that will allow for all of those use cases to be handled. And that's what we did as developing this software application. So first we developed one application, and then people started saying, well, that's for owners. And I'm saying, no, 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 that's for you. Well, I'm an architect. Well, you should use it too. And then the owner says, no, that's for the architects. I don't want to use that. So we split the application in two parts. One was Ecodomus PM, one is Ecodomus FM. They both use the same database. It's just they have different interfaces. One is targeted at the data collection and validation, and another as utilization and integration with other applications. Um, this is the example of how, uh, what potentially, it can, it can, how can it work in the hypothetical scenario. It's actually on our homepage. If you later want to look at it again, you can see it there. Let's say you have a cold call from the operating room. Um, obviously, you want to investigate the HVAC supply air system. So you select the system. It shows you what are the elements of that system. So you guys who model in MEP, don't forget to model systems, because you mostly never do. Most of the ME, Revit MEP, you open it up, you see system browser is really crappy. So without that, you will not be able to track all of that information, right? So in this case, we select the diffuser, we look at the Revit extracted properties, but we also see the BAS properties as well, you know, what was the latest saved value there. Then you're saying, okay, uh, let's say I select a few days of worth of the building automation system data because I want to see what was happening over the past few days. Uh, here, oh, I see that, yeah, it was colder, it went back to normal. What was happening on September 7? Do I have any data? Of course, we can pull the data from, let's say, Maximo or Tririgo or some other application. We see that there was a work order. Okay, let's look at that work order. We review the work order. We understand that John Smith went in there. He realized that there probably something with the filter. Maybe it's too dirty. Let's, let's just replace it, you know, standard answer. So we replace the filter. Um, but is it really an issue, right? We look at the, uh, the VAV box that sends air through that where we replace the filter. Is that the culprit, right? We look at the, that and we see that actually it's, uh, it's not the VAV's properties. It's actually the settings on the particular uh, of the room settings. So what, what it gives you, it gives you an opportunity to look at the data from different sources and understand what is the co root cause uh, issue of that problem. Um, uh, obviously, we mentioned before, mob mobility is a big thing right now. So you need to understand how the uh, smartphones and tablets, we have native applications for uh, Android, for iOS, for Windows, offline, online, can be used within this environment. Get, uh, we get the data through the APIs and IFCs into our SQL database so everybody can work on it online. We were the first company to get Kobe certified by uh, you know, 
six years ago. And since we're the biggest proponent of Kobe, I'm running the LinkedIn Kobe group with Bill East. We work together with Bill East, the founder of Kobe. It's a separate section, a separate topic to discuss. So I'm just on time. All right, thank you.